A potentially catastrophic hurricane is heading for the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. This is the most serious storm in modern history in Puerto Rico. Maria is slamming the Caribbean as a powerful Category 5 storm. The last time a Category 5 hurricane made landfall here was 90 years ago. President Trump is in Puerto Rico today meeting with officials and victims of Hurricane Maria. What is your death count as of this moment? 17? 16 certified. 16 people certified. There are a lot of questions about the official death toll mm -hmm. and whether that number truly reflects how many people have died as a result of the storm. The official estimated death toll was only 64. In Puerto Rico, communities were literally cut off from the rest of the world for weeks. And so many people were unable to get their basic needs met, much less to get medical care and other services that they needed. The government started releasing information that 64 people had died in the storm. People quickly began to not trust that information, and there was a lot of controversy around that number. This morning, Puerto Rico's governor is ordering an official recount of the death toll related to Hurricane Maria. On December 20, a night, Dean Goldman called me. Uh, she told me that uh, the government of Puerto Rico had got in touch with her and they wanted to have a study on the mortality situation in Puerto Rico. On the way to the governor's office, we formulated a basic design which said instead of using the conventional method of just counting the deaths one at a time, we decided we would calculate the excessive number of deaths. And that is, in fact, what we presented to the governor that afternoon, not even 24 hours after we got the call. I also insisted on having a counterpart inside Puerto Rico, and I insisted to have the University of Puerto Rico. Having collaborators from the island who are not only native Spanish speakers, but also really understand the people on the island, because so much of what we were looking at had to do with uh, the ability to reach out to key individuals, do interviews with them, get their trust, find out what was really going on. We were able to say, okay then, how many deaths would we have expected to have occurred? How many actually occurred? People knew that they were dying because they didn't have the medicine because of the hurricane, or they, were, they didn't have the equipment at home because of the, of the lack of electricity. And that was obviously related to, to, to the hurricane. If someone during the storm was hit by a tree and dies, it's very easy to calculate that number. But what about the person who weeks later still can't get to the hospital to get his kidney dialysis treatment and ends up dying? That's actually caused by the storm. So it's that discrepancy between direct and indirect that needed to be resolved and the deaths counted accurately. The whole drama surrounding Hurricane Maria was related to the communication. We decided that it was crucial to look at the information that was not provided to the public and how this really guided perceptions. The government of Puerto Rico did not have contingency plans in place that anticipated major power outages, disruption in telecommunications. They were disconnected from the rest of Puerto Rico. This created an information vacuum, the risk is really losing control of the crisis messaging. And that's really what we saw following Hurricane Maria. It was a 
very painful process. Uh, we had meetings uh, when people started talking about the process and started crying during the meetings. So it was it was a difficult process for them, but everybody was committed. Uh, we had to find out what is the situation, and people had to be accounted for. And today, a very big day, George Washington University releasing that study, uh, not only saying it should be higher, the death toll, but that it should be 2,975. I mean, that is huge. Yeah, yeah. Puerto Rico's governor just moments ago revising the death toll from Hurricane Maria up to 2,975. This after an independent study was released today. You may remember the official death count up until now had been just 64 people. The biggest challenge came when we were releasing the results and the fact that our results so quickly went into kind of a political world where that number, 2,975, became kind of a point of partisan contention. There is a new tweet from President Trump and it's very relevant to today. We're, we've been trying to figure out if the federal government has learned anything from what happened, the disaster that happened with Hurricane Maria. So it's pretty plain there, Allison, what he's saying about his views of the death toll, but I think we really need to put this in the context of the actual numbers. My first reaction was, I'm not going to respond. That was my first reaction. I'm not going to respond. He can say whatever he wants. We couldn't believe it. Got on the phone with Dean Goldman at about 8 o'clock in the morning. She was out of the country. It was probably like 2 o'clock in the morning. Woke her up, told her what happened. I was in Singapore. And so, and the t so 12 time zones away. And so my first reaction was that I woke up completely. And I said, this is a well done study. We had the best statisticians working on this and we had done it right so because of the team I had to tell the world hey listen guys this is good science we crafted this this sentence we stand by the science behind uh, our project it's rigorous it's up to date I better write an op-ed and explain what we did and why this was, you know, a science effort, that this was not a political effort. The Washington Post accepted it almost right away, and I woke up the next morning in Singapore with an op-ed published in the Washington Post. To set the record straight, our study was carried out with no interference whatsoever from any political party or institution. It was based on a careful examination of all of the deaths officially reported to the government of Puerto Rico between September 2017 and February 2018. We received the uh, report from George Washington uh, University, which was uh, uh, commissioned by our government. There are a series uh, of recommendations that were established in this, in this report. We can take some of these recommendations, deep dive into them, and make them executable so that in the event of another catastrophe, we are better prepared uh, for them. This was a landmark study. To put it in the words of our research participants, Hurricane Maria rewrote the books. Hurricane Maria made us rethink how we view disasters, what really happens in a catastrophic disaster. Our study helped to unveil the experiences of the people of Puerto Rico and informs the direction that the science should take. I'm hoping that as a result of this work that we see a change, not only in Puerto Rico, in terms of how we monitor deaths and how we communicate about deaths around disasters, how we work to prevent deaths, but that we see this across the world. We have to understand how it happens, how we build hospitals, how we build primary care settings, how we build pharmacies so they can resist a hurricane or an earthquake and be a resource for the community. I want to see these methods expanded to look at health impacts other than death, illnesses that are caused, disabilities, 
I want to see us go all the way to this because I think we need to do what we can to protect people and especially those who are most vulnerable. So what are the three important elements of crisis? For me personally, and I know for the rest of the research team, we knew how important this project was. We knew that this was a big responsibility. And I think because of that, we, we really gave it everything we had. We've gone about five new ones today. Okay. I use the term fearless science. So I think the legacy of that shows that we can do that type of research. It's powerful. It will forever be part of GW's story and that we're very proud of it and that students can learn from it. I have never been involved with research other than this, where you have the idea for the study, the funding for the study, the results uh, to the community, the results published in a journal in under one year for science that is lightning fast. And I am proud of that. And I do think that sense of urgency is part of what helped to propel us there. The fact that we were so committed to wanting to have the answer for the public a clear answer that we could feel we could stand behind forever.